Hey guys, today we're covering survival plots in R. And check this out. We're going to make this beautiful visualization here. And make sure you guys stick around to the end of this video because we've got three bonuses that are going to help you take your survival plots to the next level. Next thing, if you want the code for this lesson, you can get that by registering for the weekly R tips. It, you can see the link here. It's also available in the uh, notes to this video. So just sign up for this and you'll get access to the code. I'm gonna ch show you in my files right here. We're gonna be working out of 051 survival plots. And I'm gonna open up this .r file, which is what I have open over here. We're going to load all of these tidyverse janitor, tidy quant, patchwork survival, and serve miner. Next thing, we're going to load the data that comes from this data folder, this customer churn CSV file. We're going to read it in. Um, it's a little untidy, so I need to clean it up. So I need to clean up these names here. I need to um, convert the churn, which is no's and yeses, to ones and zeros. And that's going to be a requirement for the serve plot that we make from the serve miner package. Um, so I'm going to clean up some names. That's going to make these names look nice. Uh, I'm going to convert these no's and yeses to ones and no's. This is a customer churn. And we can see that each uh, value of tenure is going to be what we're measuring against. Um, we're going to take these contract and gender. These are categorical. So I need to convert these to factor. And you can see now that they're both factor with this next line. All right. Data is in the right spot. It's in. It's been formatted. We can now move on to survival modeling. That's the next step. Line 30 here. I'm going to create this serve fit to, and this is going to create a survival model. So this is using the serve um, function from the survival fit package um, or survival package. So the survival model, and we were measuring tenure, which is how many months the customer has been with us versus churn. And the one indicates whether or not they've churned uh, and how long that they were with us until they churned. Okay, and then we're measuring it by contract. So that's why you're gonna see contract month to month, one year, two year, et cetera. All right, uh, the first thing is we can create our first visualization. So I'm just going to create G1 here, which is just our first survival plot. And congratulations if you've made it here. This is a survival plot. And what we can see is that by different contracts, uh, these people, these customers can will stick around with us longer. So two year, uh, these people stick around with us for many, many months, like sometimes upwards of 60, and then they start to drop off. One year contracts, a little bit less. And then you can see the month to month contract. These people die out very quickly. Next, as promised, I have three bonuses that are going to take your survival plots to the next level. Now, this will require a little bit more ggplot2 knowledge, but I will help walk you through that. Okay, so the first bonus is to customize with my tidyquant theme tqr package. So I want to show you something real quick, and this is what you may not know. So if I go into my environment, I've got this uh, G1 that I created. So G1 is a GG survive plot or GZ serve object, and it contains a plot in here. This is a GG plot object. So I can actually extract that out by doing G1 dollar sign. And now I have my plot right here and then I can play around with it and adjust it and customize it just like a normal ggplot object. So right here, I'm going to add a theme TQ. I'm going to change the fills of these colors here. And I'm just going to make this look a little bit more professional, add some labels too. So here we go. This is what it looks like now. Bam. You can see here, we've got the beautiful colors of my tidy quant theme TQ, the blues, the reds, the greens, and so on. All right, next bonus. Bonus number two is adding a risk table. Now this is a little bit trickier. We're going to need to actually do two things and I'll show you. So we're going to make a new GG serve plot. It's basically the same function that we did up here, but now what we're doing is adding this risk table true. So I'm going to save this as G2. And if I take a look now, uh, we can quickly visualize this G2, just the, the basic. And you can see it's here. It looks a little bit to be desired though. So what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to upgrade the appearance. Um, and if I go into my environment, if I take a look at G2 now, I can see that there's a plot and a table object, and these are both ggplots. So this is great. I can 
change these and I can modify each one of these individually, but I also need a way to combine these plots again. So I'm going to take out G2 and I'm going to um, adjust that just basically using the same technique that we used previously. And I'm going to store this as G2 underscore plot. And then we're going to take that G2 table, which looks like this, and I'm going to add um, some theme TQ. And I want to show you one thing. I don't want this, these grid lines back here. So we're going to also add theme panel grid element blank, and it's going to remove these. Okay. So now I'm going to store this as G2 table. And then we're going to use this cool package called patchwork to recombine these two plots. So this plot here and this, this plot here, I want to combine. So I'm going to do G2 divided by uh, G2 plot divided by G2 table. And we get something that looks like this. However, I can see immediately, I want to adjust this layout. So that way this tables uh, takes up only about one third of the space and this plot takes up about two thirds. So I'm going to add this plot layout here with the heights C two to one. That gives me a two to one ratio. And there we go. And you can adjust this if you want it to be like a three to one or, or whatever you want. And it, it'll make this table down here a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to leave it at two to one because that's what I prefer. All right. Uh, next thing, bonus number three, faceting by groups. So I don't know if you remember, but if we go back up here to the customer churn table, there was some other um, interesting features in here like gender. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, uh, use a new function called ggserveplot underscore facet. I'm going to save this as G3. Now the main difference here is these last two arguments. We're going to facet by gender, um, which is this column right here and uh, i'm going to give it n row one so let's see what that looks like all right we now have facets we've got female and male so gender female gender male and i can see these churn probabilities now just looking at them they don't look like they're too much different but um, i want to show you how to customize these to really kind of see if there's any differences g3 is already a ggplot object so we can immediately jump right into working with ggplot we don't need to extract out the plot or anything um, and then uh, what I want to do is just update the appearance, give it a little more professional appearance. Cool. I've got the reds and the greens. And then if I want, I can change this end row to two. And what this will allow me to stack them on top of each other and just kind of see if there's any major differences, you know, um, by looking at kind of where these points cross. This one's at around 0.25. This one's at about 0.25. So they look pretty similar. It doesn't seem to be a, a big difference between male and female. So if you enjoyed this presentation, thank you very much for tuning in. I do have a free 40 minute masterclass too. If you guys want to go and take the next step, this is free. It's my 10 secrets to becoming a data scientist. Uh, I'll leave a link in the comments. You can also see the link in the code here and check that out. I encourage you guys to sign up for that and watch the 40 minute video. It'll help you accelerate your data science career, learning my favorite programming language, R and how to do data science for business. All right, I'll catch you guys later.